Okay, welcome to our second video lecture for the Tourism Marketing and Tourism Promotion module. And for this specific lecture, we'll be talking about uh, tourism as a service product, how to understand tourism as a service product, and how to market it as a service product. But before we talk about tourism as a service product and how to market it, let's talk about marketing first. So marketing is defined as a societal process by which individuals and groups obtain what they need and want through creating, offering, and freely exchanging products and services of value with others. So basically what's important here is that there is a need and a want that is being uh, addressed. You know? The need and the want of individuals and groups as the potential consumers and the ability of the organizations and companies to be able to create and offer products and services to be able to suffice the wants and the needs of the people who are wanting to consume something. Now, usually, marketing and selling are frequently confused as the same thing, but they're not. Selling is just one component of marketing, but marketing has a bigger vision. And the bigger vision of marketing is to be able to uh, provide the needs and the wants of the customers or the consumers. But for selling, it's really just being able to present a product uh, and having that product available, uh, making sure that the audience know about the product and um, consume the product. And of course, the, the company would receive money from the consumers. But marketing is beyond that. They, more than that is the ability of the company to be able to suffice the needs of the consumers. And because selling is very much focused on that relationship, uh, of exchange of money for goods and services and none other else um, the success of just selling a product would be short term however marketing um, produces long-term success because again uh, a good company doesn't just produce products out of whim no when they when they go into a marketing framework uh, companies they create product because they feel that this is what consumers would need or would potentially need so cost uh, marketing is more is more customer focused compared to just selling which is company focused or um, profit focused and marketing management is defined as the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customers' requirements and to be able to be profitable in the long run. And at the end of the day, marketing management really wants the company to have not just profitability but an actual um, consistent relationship with the customers and consumers. And again, the process is one, identifying the needs. So uh, but basically, a company does not just create a product, but the product that they create is something that they research and they see that this is something that customers really need or anticipated need, meaning probably the customers doesn't know what they need yet, um, but the marketing management is able to do research so that they can already know that they need it. No, eventually when the product is out. Siguro one company that's really good in terms of anticipating needs, especially during the 2000s, is Apple no? in their creation of smartphones. Probably people doesn't, if don't even know that they need a camera with their phone. They don't need a touch screen for their phone. They don't need that app interface. And eventually, uh, people started engaging in that product and they see that a lot of their needs are being satisfied the product by that product that they didn't even know uh, was a need that they had until that time where iPhone, the first iPhone generation was introduced. So that's an example of anticipating the need. Um, the customers may not know it yet, but eventually your product will be able to satisfy a need that will eventually arise, especially when they interact with your product. And of course, to complete the loop, dapat um, in marketing management, after identifying the needs and of course, after identifying what your uh, company and your brand can offer, then you will be able to create products and services in order to satisfy those anticipated and actual needs. And then of course, various companies and brands um, are able to also 
produce their marketing concept. Their marketing concept is basically an overarching statement that basically tells us that this is what we want to achieve in relation to your needs and your anticipated needs. So for example, BDO, ang kanilang marketing concept ay we find ways. So basically, the way they help out customers in relation to banking and finance is about finding ways. And basically, uh, yung ability nila to be able to reach out to their clients in that specific tagline and their products and their services are um, are aligned with that vision or with that marketing concept is very effective as well. Siyempre, in relation to tourism, we have, for example, Air Asia. Now, everyone can fly. So, basically, they are targeting a specific set of customers, uh, a specific uh, set of potential tourists who may not have a lot of money to be able to shell out, to be able to experience um, international travel. But Air Asia says, you know, we identify that your need may be money and you probably are in a budget right now, but that doesn't mean that you can't fly right you can't be able to travel from one place to another so we are providing really budget and cheap rates in order for you to be able to experience a travel experience that again probably at the moment you don't feel that you need it because you don't have money but now we are presenting you a product that you can purchase and probably it could um spark the need and the want of the customer na hey okay so i have enough money i have enough savings probably i do want to go for a tour or an international travel so basically a marketing concept is uh, identifying different consumer needs but also delivering a tourist product whose experiences provide sets of satisfaction that are preferable to those of the competitors because also we have to think of their needs but at the same time we have to think about the other services that are available uh, from the companies and brands that offer the same products and services that we do and usually for marketing we try to uh, make ourselves unique we try to find a point wherein these competitors won't be able to provide that need for you and therefore we provide that for you and being able to create such a marketing concept, no, like for example, Air Asia, now everyone can fly. This is something that um, differentiates them from really big, you know, airline companies that really charge a lot uh, for flights. And we, uh, for our, our Air Asia, they offer cheaper flights. So that's their like differentiating factor. But for like larger airlines, like for example, Emirates or Philippine Airlines, for instance, their their concept or their, their main marketing is about, you know, um, comfort during flight, no? Uh, so these are some of the marketing concepts of the higher end, no? higher tier airlines. Now, what influences uh, the perceived tourism product value of a specific tourism product. So the first factor is the actual price asked and the relativity to prices for the same product or similar product offered elsewhere. So usually, you know, if you are a potential consumer and you are said that this is the amount that we will charge you for this type of service, and then usually if you are a smart consumer, you would look at other alternatives out there and you would look at the price range of where that specific um, offer falls and that's one way that ah okay so this is a good price or that is a bad price usually we compare it with other brands or companies that offer the similar product or service next is the perceived quality service and associated with the brand and product so first is we consider the price second is we consider ano ba yung tingin nating quality ng produkto or ng service like for example yeah probably Cebu Pacific may be a uh, very cheap flight compared to Philippine Airlines but we know that Philippine Airlines is charging more because the types of services and the type of comfort that it offers while we are in flight is much superior compared to when you are in Cebu Pacific so uh, again if even if you say na mas mataas ang presyo but the perceived product value of being in Philippine Airlines is still reliable is still is still understandable because the amount or the quality of the service that they provide in uh, Philippine Airlines is much better 
Next is convenience in purchasing and its congruence to the needs of the customer. So can you just imagine if there's still an airline that asks you to book their flight in a physical office instead of online booking? So syempre, uh, if it's easier for the person to purchase that product, there's a higher rate that that person would purchase that product, would think that that uh, product is valued enough to be purchased, right? So that's the reason also why online selling and online marketing is a very uh, trendy thing nowadays because the ease of purchasing is heightened in online marketing um, and also the convenience of how you be, are able to pay and receive the product at your own house or at your uh, place of employment also gives an extra factor and extra uh, kick to the uh, perceived product value. Next factor that affects the perceived tourism product value is the difficulty that the consumer experiences when they try to access the benefits or the relative price of the product. So if you present the product and you don't present the price yet there, or you don't present the complete details yet, and then you say na PM is the key, or um, please call this number, or please email us, or please go to this site in order for you to know. And then when you go to the next step in terms of accessing information, may mga barriers pa, and there are a lot of difficulties for you to be able to access the information and the price and the details of the product or the service. The tendency is for the um to for the consumer or the potential consumer to be turned off diba so and then tendency tendency niya if it takes more time for me to be able to know what i have to know about your product the tendency is for me to ma to for me to be too lazy or to feel uh unenergized to um to consume or to purchase the product in question next the experience associated with the purchase or consumption process. So, syempre, the easier the purchase, um, and of course, the the experience that you have once you have purchased the product, no, you were you were um, the the experience of being in a certain attraction, destination, or being in a certain transportation or accommodation. Um, this will affect, of course, the extent to which they will uh, purchase again the given. Uh, product or the that they will increase the value so pro probably uh they they were f first um skeptical about the uh product that you were offering but they purchased it anyway but they were having so much expectations and then when they got to the plane for example they got more services that they expected so the tourism product value would increase because of that now, what encompasses the total tourist experience that those who handle tourism-related brands must take into consideration when they perform their marketing research and their promotional activity? So first is the pre-planning phase of the tourist. Again, it's always very important to be able to anticipate the need of a person. So um, the person doesn't uh, always have to have uh, an articulated desire to travel. Probably you can already um, you can already uh, present your promos to people, and probably it would ignite or spark their need to travel, so that they will eventually uh, want to travel and start planning their travel because of the services that you have advertised in given. Uh, platform. So, for example, when you talk about online marketing, usually the advertisements are pushed on our person based on the person's um, search history and internet activity, right? Because again, um, the internet using artificial intelligence will be able to will be able to track your activities and kind of anticipated that ah maybe you, you looked for uh you look for trees in the google image search probably you want to see trees so we'll push you some advertisements about nature tourism something like that and a prop and of course if that was effective then it would ignite a desire for persons to go and purchase a travel plan no? Next is the purchase. So again, no, in the process of purchasing, because again, we talk about tourism products, it's not like online selling wherein you 
um, when and you just you know choose a product from a list and then you say purchase a product you put in your card details and then you're done but when you talk about like purchasing an accommodation or booking a hotel room or booking a flight the process is longer because again you have to type in details you have to type in uh, travel details travel itinerary you have to uh, of course um, ask for a lot of things like what type of food do you want to eat while you're there do you want food even are there um, are there souvenirs that you want to buy while you are in flight or for example in accommodation do you want a two bedroom uh, two two bed bedroom or do you want a presidential suite or whatever so the process for purchasing um, tourism related products are different compared to just you know getting products online so the the seamlessness of you know deciding to enter to a website to order or book a flight until the time they check they check out and have their flights flight booking ticket ready and printed the process of that seamlessness the ease of getting into it the user interface of the website will affect the whole tourism experience right? and there are a lot of like um already defaulters to some brands like for example ah dito sa airline na to medyo mahirap magbook naglalag hindi friendly hindi user friendly yung interface ng website hindi na ako pupunta diyan because the purchase history is a nightmare or for example ah for this specific um for this specific airline or this specific hotel they don't accept gcash and the money that i have is currently at gcash so probably i won't take that hotel i'll go to another hotel so again a part of the tourist experience is the process of purchasing so next is of course the journey uh, going outbound um so the um comfort uh and the services that they get while they're in transport whether that's a train a bus or an airplane also influences the tourist experience so also a part of marketing you know you're given product especially when the product is being consumed at the moment is to provide the best services so that they get a better impression so that there would be a return purchase and of course the visit and the stay would compromise a big um, dimension of the total tourist experience no the the attractions that they were able to enjoy the uh, the cheapness or the uh, value that they give to the products that they prov uh, that they get there and the services they get while they are on stay and of course the the comfort that they get from the accommodation that they have the the reliability of the service while they're in the accommodation and at the same time the internal transport system madali bang makarating from point A to point B from attraction A to attraction B am I wasting too much time in travel that's why I am not um, I am not uh, getting most of the attraction that I am in visiting so that's an example of your um, visit stay in terms of the total tourism experience next is of course the return journey so the return journey they won't be asking so much services it's really more dapat mas comfy mas pahinga na lang so uh, that's also some one consideration for the total tourist experience especially if we're talking about the same airline in the outbound journey and of course, the overall reflection on the activity. How does the uh, whole tourism experience change the person? Did it increase his perspective of the world? Did it make him culturally enriched? And because of that, would that person want to travel more or would like to travel back to the place that he went to using the same transportation or accommodation or whatever? Now, tourism service product is not the same as other types of service products and these are some of the characteristics that differentiate tourism products from, the, from other products or services. The first one is intangibility, meaning tourism service products cannot be easily evaluated or demonstrated in advance of its purchase. So, hindi siya katulad ng mga binibenta, for example, sa Ace Hardware that you can actually see the vacuum cleaner at work so that you can already evaluate, ah, this is something that's going to be good for me. Or for example, pumunta ka sa grocery and then there are people offering you, for example, new brands of bacon and hot dog and there's free taste and you can already evaluate kung papasaba siya sa panlasa mo so that that can affect your decision. In tourism service product, walang ganon. No? You won't be able to have a free taste or an advanced experience because again, di ka mo pwedeng dalhin lang ng ilang araw in a different place 
just to try it out that's going to amass a lot of you know a lot of costs for the company so usually um that's the one of the challenge is that um you can only just make them imagine uh the product while you're while they're already there um in the and consuming the products that they purchase. No, hindi siya katulad ng massage for instance na pwede kang sampulan ng 10 seconds na ganito magmasahe. So if you want more of it, you can go inside the massage uh, parlor and you can get a full experience of the massage. Parang ganoon. Pero in in tourism, walang walang advanced, walang testing, no? It's impossible to do testing. Probably they have it in airlines, no? Na for example, may samples and these are how the seats look like for our business class, no? So you can like have a feel, but that's like the most that you can get. But you cannot have a sample of the whole airplane experience itself because again, it makes it takes so much cost and it's just um takes too much time as well. Next, we have perishability. Service products such as tourism and like goods cannot be stored for sale on a future occasion. So for example, pag nabook mo na yung room doon, no, at hindi siya na nakuha, hindi na the, the, the booking for that specific day, for the specific room, for that specific time can no longer be accessed again. Nabili na yon Kahit yon ay nagamit o hindi. So it's perishable. Or for example, the the certain person's experience no uh cannot be experienced again uh at the same rate at the same time at the same moment because hindi siya katulad ng pag inuwi mo yung laptop mo ba bumili ka ng laptop inuwi mo siya it's going to be your laptop for the next 3 years 4 years and it's going to be something that reminds you of the purchase this one you only get to purchase it and experience it once because it's because tourism service products are very much time bound you cannot take it home next is inseparability so most tourism products not all but most tourism products is often consumed and produced simultaneously so for example you pay for the attraction the attraction is is performed for you or made for you you pay for the food the food is made for you so production and consumption is um, done mostly simultaneously in tourism next is that it has short to exposure so limited time during which company personnel can build a relationship and effect repeat business because it only just takes a short time for you to book a flight a short time for you to book an accommodation a short time for you to experience your accommodation a short time for you to be able to experience an attraction and you already have to build a good reputation on it because it's not like an iPhone that stays with you for a long period of time and you can like continually build a good relationship by giving customer service but in tourism because most of the tours are of a limited time, you can only make a good impression to your consumers during that limited time that you are provided while you are providing them the service that you are providing. Next, compared to other service products, it's more personal. It has a human aspect of self. It's very much involved emotionally in the service encounter. So this is not like, for example, iPhones or gadgets or let's say clothes that you know can uh, can address you know uh, the needs of a collective group of people but for every tourism product it's tailor fitted to each person there's a very unique personal touch for each tourism product that is being consumed and therefore the human aspect of the tourism service product sets it apart from other types of service products because again not everyone are psycho uh, psychogenic um, tourists not everyone are nature tourists and not every nature tourists have the same wants and needs so uh, the needs have to be immediately provided to the persons who are asking them and it has to be tailor fitted to what they want so next is that uh, tourism has an increasing self services uh, to decrease operational costs. So we now see a lot of self-service buffets in hotels. We have online bookings, self-check-ins uh, to, to decrease, of course, the demand for human resources. And again, at the same time, uh, this influences the whole tourist experience because uh, you have to really make sure that despite 
uh, the tourists doing things for themselves, you know, helping themselves to eat, helping themselves in terms of booking. They have to have a good experience even if there's no one else there except the computer and the laptop. Now, how do we maintain quality assurance for the tourism service product? So these are some of the ways. First is, while tourism service product is intangible, um, there should be some sort of tangibility that must be presented to the individuals who are interested to purchase. Like for example, there should be evidence that you can present. You know, oh, we want to go to Switzerland. These are pictures of Switzerland. These are videos of Switzerland. These are videos of our tour guide um, providing their tours. No, this is an example. This is our website. You can get information here. So, um, while you cannot do free testing, or you cannot do an uh, uh, a prior um, a prior uh, sampling for the uh, part, uh, for the customers for the tourism product that you're offering at least provide them some sort of evidence or images or information of the services that you can give that are concrete enough so that they can make a good imagination of what they can expect when they purchase your tourism product. So next factor of quality assurance is reliability, meaning that the services that we provide must be consistent with what we promise. No? Kung ito yung ebidensya na binigay natin about our services, dapat yun ang makuha nila while they are consuming the product that we are providing them. Next, we have responsiveness. So for example, nagkaroon ng problema, there should be quick response and again, accurate response to the person. Uh, and that's very difficult, especially when it, we talk about online uh, help desks. No, it's very difficult to 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 be able to create a good experience, especially when you are having a lot of issues and concerns being held at the same time. No, but for example, in uh, the the quickness of how the hotel service could arrive to your room while when you call them, that's an example of a good quality assurance measure. Um, that will increase, of course, the value of the tourism product in the minds of the people who are consuming the product. Next is, of course, competence. Diba? Dapat, you're able to provide the services in an utmost uh, qualified manner. And of course, because this is a very um, human-centered, you know, and uh, the self is very much an important factor in the whole tourism experience, there should be a lot of empathy that is being exerted by all the people and all the processes that are um, provided by whatever by the companies related to the uh, to the tourism experience. So, uh, being able to listen to the uh, clients' feelings and being able to uh, project caring in every response and every um, in every service that is provided to them, it's increased um, uh, perceived value for the product. So in this video, we were able to define marketing and marketing management and differentiated marketing from selling. We also um, discussed about the factors that influence the perceived value of the tourism service product. We also um, discussed about the tourism service, ex uh, the tourism uh, experience, the complete tourism experience, and we also discussed about the quality assurance uh, factors that will increase the perceived value, and of course, the characteristics that sets apart tourism product value from other. Uh, forms of service products. For our next video, we will talk about the marketing mix as it is applied in tourism.